What's going on, Vinyl Community? Welcome to another video with The Record Spinner. In today's video, I am doing yet another record store vlog. Um, as of filming today, it is Wednesday, December 26th, so it is the day after Christmas. And I am doing what every vinyl collector is doing today, and that is taking their holiday cash and spending it at their local record store, which is the most logistical thing to do. Uh, just got off of a uh, 5 a.m. shift over at work, doing holiday resets and stuff so it was a very early somewhat tiring but very productive shift and it is all bound to be paid off with this record store visit so let's go in shall we all right so i don't know if it's me but every time i approach this store i just hear angels giving praise you know what i'm saying So I was in here fairly recently doing some holiday shopping for friends and I kind of held back from picking up some notable titles that I really wanted to snag and I figured I'd wait until the post-holiday time period to pick them up and by the looks of it, they pretty much have everything that I'm looking for. You'll have to find out which albums they are at the end of the video. things should be and yes they are exactly where they should be If, if, if you had this greeting everyone at your door.
All right, Brian, I am stuck between two. The works or Great Distance 2? Well, uh, man, tough call. Usually I'd go quality over quantity, but I think you get both with the Great Distance there. Man's right. Well, that time has come. Until next time. All right, so I just got back to my car, just left the record store, and wow we today was a very successful visit. Um, I picked up some amazing finds, which I'll showcase in this last part of the, uh, of the vlog. And uh, why this visit was so amazing, I will tell you. Um, I do gotta say this though. Um, I've kind of come to terms with this recently. For myself as a collector, um, I still have that rabid, you know, buying and collecting blood, but I'm on this mission now um, to just look in my collection, see what gaps are there, and then just picking them up instantly. And that's really what I've been trying to do lately. And so I really achieved that with uh, this little haul that I picked up, along with just what I've been buying lately, you know, within the past, you know, month or two. Uh, so enough of the chit chat. I'm going to show you what I picked up. Now, first, I am storing these albums in my newly purchased Pink Floyd Animals tote bag. I did some holiday shopping, uh, like I said, at the store just before Christmas, and I saw this bag chilling on a spindle, and I really wanted to get it. But, like, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, of all, like, the meet and greets that I've, you know, attended for shows that I've seen, like, the packages that you get with those things already come with tote bags, and I'm just like, Dylan, do you really need another one? But... Everyone needs a Pink Floyd Animals tote bag, and glad to say I will be using this bag when I plan on doing major, you know, splurging hauls like I did today. So, first off, what do we have? I'm just picking up the first one that's here. We have The Eagles, uh, Long Run. This was the last album to come out of the sort of classic period of the band's timeline. This has a bunch of hits on it. You have the title track, I Can't Tell You Why. Uh, you also have the Sad Cafe, and you also have some really excellent, um, I don't know if they're non-singles, uh, but you have like In The City, Those Shoes. I mean, this is a very solid record on itself. And um, I think I remember I had this in my hands when I did the, um, the record store visit video that I did uh, in the summer. Uh, and it's this album has been sitting there since and I figured you know what might as well pick it up This is the of course. This is the recent reissue with the original artwork and 180 gram vinyl um, mastered by Bernie Grunman and uh, All the Eagle stuff that has been coming out recently um, Sounds spectacular very glad to own this and Up next we have this is another one. Um, I think I mentioned this in my Black Friday um, vlog, which was the first uh, record store vlog that I did. I picked up Iron Maiden's Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Um, ironically, this is the band's seventh album, and of course, uh, this is, I mean, classic 80s period Maiden, so you have tracks like Can I Play With Madness, The Evil That Men Do, the very progressive rock-influenced Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, the title track, The Clairvoyance, uh, you also have Moonchild, which is an awesome album opener, really excellent stuff, and this album, I would say... In terms of the 80s stuff, I mean, this is easily a standout, particularly when they started to get more into the keyboards and the synthesizers. Um, this was a major, major step up. So really glad to finally have this in the collection. And next, ooh, let's see. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So this has been there for a very long time. And... I mean, I'm not going to take points off because the hype sticker is torn off. I mean, I wouldn't be able to retrieve it in this kind of sleeve anyways. But this is the first album from Aerosmith. It's the self-titled debut. Uh, you, This, I mean, listen, I love Aerosmith. Um, some periods more than others. Um, I kind of dig them more when they were that... Uh, dirty blues rock band from like the 70s into the early 80s and then when MTV came they just kind of completely got swallowed up by that and then outside writers and whatever but that's a whole other argument this is the the embryo of what was to come from these guys so right off the bat you have dream on I mean 
there you go. Uh, but you have some other excellent songs in here, like you got Mama Kin, Moving Now, uh, Make It, which is a fantastic album opener. Amazing, amazing stuff. Really glad to have this as well. And up next, as you saw in the video, Brian made the decision. I picked up Queen Greatest Hits 2. I gotta say, side note, um, this Christmas, this past Christmas, um, not, I mean, I would say for me and also other people in my family, it's been a queen themed Christmas. And I got to I think it's just mainly because of the movie and just because queen is awesome to begin with. Um, but I went ahead and picked up this. So this second greatest hits compilation covers 1981 to 1991. So, um, covers that gap of 10 years and you have Essentially, all the 80s stuff and songs off of the Innuendo album, which came out in 91. Uh, this compilation in particular came out, I think, literally just before uh, Freddie passed away. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it, this is another fantastic uh, compilation. I already have the FYE exclusive version of Greatest Hits 1. So this will sit perfectly next to that compilation. And um, yeah, just a fantastic overview of what I feel particularly here in the US, a very underrated period because by the time they did Hot Space, I mean, that was the last tour that they did in the US. And then everything like, with, there was the whole backlash with the I Wanna Break Free video and everything. So in terms of myself as like a big Queen fan, this is a compilation which is worth having and will uh, satisfy my uh, 80s period Queen needs. And then we have the grand finale. Now this record, I remember, I think, I don't know if I, I, I believe I pointed it out in my first record store video in the summer and it's been sitting there. And according to Brian, this was part of a sale that was going on a week before Black Friday and they were just trying to clear way for some of the RSD Black Friday titles that they were going to be getting. Somehow I missed this. How? I do not know. But I decided to take the plunge because, yes, it is a bootleg. And it did come on a high price tag. But it was all worthwhile uh, for reasons that I am going to uh, tell you. This right here is Pink Floyd, The Narrow Way, Early Years, 68 to 69. So the tracks on this, right off the bat, you get um, a BBC... Um, radio session from 1969 from May. You get some outtakes from the more uh, album sessions from 69 as well. You get two tracks from Capitol Studios in LA from 68. And yeah, and the rest is pretty much all from the more sessions. So this is a interesting, you know, re you know, release that covers that middle period. You know, they just lost Barrett and they're really trying to find their feet. And before they went on to do Adam Hartmother and then Metal and everything else. Uh, but like I said, this is a bootleg. And as you can see, the cover is reminiscent of the compilation A Nice Pair, which features Piper the Gates of Dawn and Sauce Full of Secrets. And it features just all kinds of notes on uh, the recordings that are featured on this. All the songs here... Um, are featured on the early years box set, which I do proudly own, but I just really wanted a vinyl release of some of the radio sessions and the unreleased songs that are found on that box. I want it on vinyl. And I don't know, like I feel like they would not go as far as to release that box set in a vinyl configuration. I mean, if they do, I mean, hell, I'll definitely buy that up. I mean, I love that early period stuff, but I think this will do me just fine. There's another uh, volume of of this because like I said this covers 68 to 69 there was one that covered like 65 to 67 and I remember the store had it and they must have sold it and I was looking everywhere in the P section for it because if they had it I would have definitely bought it and I would have completed my set but it was not to be now I gotta say ma major major thanks to Brian for hooking me up with this because look I don't know if you can make that out see if you can focus look at that price tag you see that? See if I, there we go. You see that? I paid half that. I paid twenty bucks for this record. Twenty dollars for this, uh, mainly because it it must have been part of the sale. Like I said, don't know how I missed it, but he went on and decided to discount it. 
uh, the price that it would have been if someone were to buy it during the sale. So many thanks, Brian. Really appreciate it. Very thoughtful gesture. And um, that just goes to show, you know, when you take care of your local record store and you show them your support, they will hook you up indeed. So very glad that I picked this up. And uh, a very fitting end to this because that, my friends, is the end of my second record store vlog. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video. And most importantly, keep the record spinning.